Thank you very much. Yeah, she's like, whoa, you got coffee breath, brother. Thank you. Oh, right up the nose. Thank you for that. Oh, yes. I'm Mitch Matthews, and in 2006, one of my big dreams was on the ropes. I was ready to give up. I wanted to walk away. But instead, my wife and I decided to host something we call the Big Dream Gathering. The idea was simple. Invite some friends to our house and have everyone write down some dreams and goals on sheets of paper that we could put up on the walls. Then we went and looked at each other's dreams to see if we could help, either through an idea, a suggestion, or a connection. Now my dream team and I get to go all over the country hosting Big Dream Gatherings and meeting with people who have gone after dreams big and small. I want to invite you to be a part of this. I mean, think about it. What if you gave yourself permission to join us? What if you gave yourself permission to dream big? So we are in Arizona today. We are in Tucson to be specific. Thank you, Annabelle. And we're doing our big dream gathering over at the University of Arizona tonight. Before we go there though, we're gonna spend some time here at the heart of the horse ranch. We're gonna to talk to the dreamer behind all of this and he's gonna put me to work. So are you familiar with um, the types of hay? Nope. Okay. None of it. I appreciate that you would think that I would be. I love that, right. but yeah, no. Just throw that in that black bucket there. In this black bucket? Yep. Okay. Just slide it in there? Slide it in there. Yeah. I'm working. So throw that right there on top of that Bermuda. Okay. Here you go. There's some steak for you. <laughs> now, on the trail, this horse is a really difficult animal, but she's a sweetheart, so. <laughs> a There's like a 30% chance you're gonna be totally fine right now. Okay, that's awesome. 30%'s good. What's one of your favorite things of working with horses? For me, what I've found is that they are really the closest thing to a direct mirror about how you're doing. Because they communicate through nonverbal and emotion, energy, intuition. So if I come up to a horse and I'm all out of sorts and I'm filled with anxiety or fear or Stereo, anger or, yeah. or, or whatever, and I'm not present, the horse is not going to be responsive. Equine therapy is an experiential therapy meaning that you're doing something, you're moving, you're being engaged. So I've been a therapist for, for over a decade now, and I've found that talk therapy only goes so far for a couple of reasons. One, there's that inherent fear of judgment. Sure. Horses don't do that, right? So when you're with the horse, you kind of just instinctively know, oh, this animal's not judging. need to first get to that place where you have that calm and gentle yet firm assertiveness. I maintain that same level of intensity right there. Eye contact with the eye, belly button on the drive line. Beautiful. Also understand that this horse could be anywhere else right now. This horse can be anywhere in this round pen. It's a 50 foot diameter round pen. She could be anywhere. She's choosing to be right there. When these kids come, they don't realize that it's therapy, right? right. But the parents will say, look, you know, they're struggling in school. They're, you know, they're getting bullied or they don't have a voice or they don't talk or they won't look in the eye. After a couple of times with the horse, you know, it's just a massive improvement. It's just like they're confident. They shake your hand firmly. Yeah. They look you in the eye. You really can develop that sense of confidence. And, and I'm not saying that they're going to be perfect, but they always can fall back on, oh, I know that I can be accepted and loved with this animal, and that can carry over in my relationships with humans. 
I'm in recovery. You know, I've been sober for a little bit over 12 years now. And uh, before that, you know, was just the most miserable time of my life. So I was homeless and like real homeless, like where you're hungry. And you scrounge up $5 and you figure, well, am I gonna spend this money on food? Or am I gonna go buy drugs? And more often than not, I go buy drugs. And I was just in a point where I would wake up every morning outside and I would, I would curse God because, because I was still alive. He said on one particular day I woke up and said, I don't want to be homeless anymore. And he said in that moment, he said, I didn't realize if I had what it took to get out of this, but he said in that moment, I knew I had what it took to make some better decisions for that day. And he said, so I took a step. And so time goes by and you know, I start going to school. I'm like, oh, I can do this. And, um, and then I kind of fell in love with the horses. He said, every day I got up, he said, I didn't know if we were actually going to be able to make this work. But he said, every day, I just decided to be in the moment, take a breath and say, I don't know if I've got what it takes to complete this, to fully walk this out. But he said, I've got what it takes to be in the moment today and do the best with what I've got today. It's a principle that works when you're working with horses, but it's also a principle that will see you through so many dreams is to be able to say, I don't know. I don't know if I've got what it takes. I don't know if I know everybody I need to know. I don't know if I have all the contacts. I, have, I don't know that I have the money, all of the ex experience that I need, but today, I'm gonna be in this moment. I can make the best decisions. I can do the best I can with today and continue to walk it out. The most important thing I wanna say about the horses is that, that they really provide a deep faith that um, being who you are and what you are and where you are and when you are is okay. All right, so thanks so much for joining us today. I'm hoping that David's story, as well as seeing people give themselves permission to dream, has inspired you to think about some of your own dreams. I'm also hoping that David's story inspired you to think about living in the moment, being in the moment. You may not feel like you have all the answers. You may not feel like you know all that you need to make that dream a reality, but I'm hoping that you take a deep breath, you give yourself permission to dream and take that next step and just see where it takes you. And hey, come see us at a big dream gathering soon.